Okay, the next steps I'd like to show you is how we can extract spectra in different ways or create extracted ion chromatograms from the spectra in uh, multiple different ways. So recall the one way was doing it is using the range select tool. We can uh, either double click to create a spectra. We can right click on the chromatogram and say extract MS spectra. We can highlight, we can then say right click extract MS spectra, or we can double click. Those all achieve the same thing. They either extract a, a single spectra or the average of the spectra across a peak. So um, we can also right click and say extract chromatograms. Then we can create extracted ion chromatograms for particular features. That's if we know of a particular ion eluting at a certain place, then we can um, easily create a very focused ion chromatogram. Um, and for now, let's try and create that using some of the data that we have. So for this particular peak, I'm going to do a range select. I can even do some background subtracting. Right click, define this area as background. I can right click on this spectra and subtract the background spectra. And then I've got something that's cleaned up a little bit. Okay, so in this case, we've got diazepam. We've got uh, it eluting at about 8.3 minutes. And we can maybe also decide what else is in our spectrum. So, and we can use the delta mass caliper to see if there's anything obvious in terms of adducts and that we need to consider when we're extracting a spectrum. So in this case, I'm measuring peak to peak. And when you get that little cursor on top of the peak of interest, you start clicking, so it's left click drag, and it auto snaps to the next location. In this case, you can see it's 21.98. That represents a sodium. So we know this is a sodium adduct. Uh, again, if you're not seeing any of these uh, masses, it could be because you need to adjust the peak threshold. So we'll adjust the peak threshold, then we can start seeing some of these masses. So in this case, um, it might be useful to extract this peak or this mass and this mass. So I'm going to, again, use now my range select tool. I'm going to um, then highlight that mass of interest. If I go right click and I say extract e ion chromatogram or extract extract ion chromatogram at the maxima of the ranges, it's going to select the apex of that peak. So 2850787 uh, and it's going to create a extracted ion chromatogram. The other option was also right clicking saying extract EIC and I can do it over the selected ranges. That means from where I've highlighted the spectrum. So it's two ways of creating an extracted ion chromatogram. We can also look at the behavior of that sodium adduct by doing the same. We can extract it over the selected ranges. And now you can see the sodium adduct does co-elute, although um, there, there might be other species. Let's extract it over the maxima in the range. And you can see that sodium adduct is co-eluting. So it might be useful summing those two together when you're creating an extracted ion chromatogram when you're doing quantitation. Or you could potentially use the 285 as a quantifier ion. And if you don't have MSMS level detail, you can use the 307 as a quant qualifier ion that if the one is present at a particular ratio, then we know maybe it, it can be associated with that compound or molecule of interest. So in this case, I've shown you a few ways of extracting an ion chromatogram. Let's clean up the spectra again. And in here, we can again, on the TIC chromatogram, we can go extract chromatograms. And in this case, we can make an EIC, which is a composite of both. So 285, 0787 and 307-0612. Now at this stage we're using the masses we've obtained in the mass chromatogram. How do we know these are 
actually the correct ones. There might be a bit of a mass error. And that's where you might have to check your formula. You plug your formula into uh, your calculator, something like an isotope distribution calculator. So you would plug in your formula for diazepam, in this case C16H13 chlorine, two nitrogens and oxygen, and simulate a protonated ion. In this case we get a mass of zero, uh, 2850789, so slightly different from the other value we had. So let's correct that, 89. And then for the sodium adduct where we expect it is 3070609, which we had 12, so 09. So now we can create a extracted ion chromatogram, a composite one composed of both ions or both species. And in that case, then you can integrate the peak and use that for quantitative, quantitative purposes. Okay, the next steps are dealing with data that may have been acquired in targeted MSMS mode or auto MSMS mode. So let's open this data file. And immediately you can see that to uh, total ion chromatogram is a little bit more busy and you've got these jagged lines, which just suggests there's a TOF MS scan as well as product ion scans. So how do we simplify this a little bit? We can go right click, extract chromatograms, and then for our level, we can then decide um, what level of extraction we can do. So we'll extract the MS data out of that, and we'll extract the MS MS data out of that. So in this case, if you did want to extract spectra, you can highlight the peak with your range select tool again, and you can immediately see that's a scan, that's a TOF MS scan, and the representative average scans in the product ions are now here. So um, as uh, the instrument is going through um, the different acquisition parameters, depending on how the method has been set up. So you can see that this particular ion has been selected for fragmentation, the, indicated by that little cursor, and there is now a, a product ion spectra with some product ions. And there's some useful information, potentially, if you're doing uh, structural elucidation work, you can use your delta mass caliper and very quickly establish what are some of the, the fragmentation events and what are the losses from the, the main ions. So in this case, if we do measure uh, 101 and then subsequent losses of 28, neutral losses 27. So you can potentially deduce something of the chemical moieties from this main precursor ion. So what fragmented. So that's just a very easy way of extracting uh, different levels of um, spectra from your composite total ion chromatogram. Another way of doing that is also using your walk chromatogram tool. So if you on your top menu, left click, and if we now pan using the cursor, we can see that uh, panning to the right, we can see this changes the product ion. So there's a few product ion scans, and then we back to MS level scan product ion scans, MS level scan. So as we're progressing over that peak, you can see here's our molecule of interest in a TOF MS scan. Then a product ion scan has happened and there's another indicator that it's happened at 10 collision energy and the fragmenter is 150. If you're not seeing those items, then you can also go in the display options, the chromatogram display options, and you can say expand with ionization fragmenter and collision energy. So in this case, it's not being shown. Let's reactivate the spectrum display options and reactivate that. So now you can see it's 10. So if we pan again with our cursor, we'll see there's another one for 20. There's another one for 40. So you can very easily get an idea that that precursor ion has been selected for fragmentation, you're getting some low energy fragments, and these are high energy fragments in the high energy channel as you progress through the data file.